Okay, we're back online. Um, I want to make sure we're online because, before I start speaking because, you know, nobody's on here. And I, I want to tell you something just a minute here. Let's, I'm having problems with this computer. Um, you know, I want to let you know, and I don't say this um, proudly. I say it humbly. I'm not doing these videos for myself, okay? These videos that God has me doing are for you. All right, because I know the Lord. I, I know what he's getting ready to do. He's been speaking to me, and he's been preparing me for such a time as this, okay? You need to hear what God has to say, all right? And there are those that don't want to hear this type of message. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, you better get ready. You better get ready, because things are going to change in this nation. They're going to change in the church, all right? And you're, we're so used to going here, we're going there. It's all going to stop. God is going to go, you know, we don't want to hear those prophetic um, servants that are speaking the truth. No, we don't want to hear them. We'd rather listen to false doctrine. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, it's going to end. So I'm not doing these videos for myself. I'm going to tell you right now because, to be honest with you, I don't want to do them. But I'm doing it to obey the Holy Ghost, all right? Because if Jesus wants to say something and he's trying to get the attention of his people and we're not listening, we're being stubborn. I'm just going to tell you right now, we're being stubborn and rebellious. We don't want to listen. We want to do things our own way. We want to plan our own life, go here, go there. We don't want to submit and do things God's way. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, it's going to be God's way or no way. And I'm not trying to be mean. I'm trying to speak the truth. God is getting ready to go like that. He's going to shake up the body of Christ, and he's going to shake the world up so we can get in line with what God's going to do, and we're going to be on the backside. We're going to miss the greatest revival of all time because God is getting ready to humble America. That's right. Listen up. God is getting ready to humble our nation. And I've been speaking it loud and clear, and there's other prophetic service that are speaking, but we do not want to listen. We want to do what we want to do, and we don't want to do what God is saying. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, God is going to humble all of us. Remember, we have spoken about it before. He disciplines us, all right? He's going to take the rod, and he's going to discipline us. If we're not going to listen, God is just going to do it, all right? He, he comes real nicely trying to get our attention, but we don't want to listen. Our nation don't want to listen. We're allowing it's to become like a modern day Sodom and Gomorrah. That's what's happening. And I've talked about it before. And we Christians are sitting back. We're not standing up and we're not speaking out for what is going on. And I'm going to tell you right now, we're going to lose our freedom. Do you hear what I'm saying? We are going to lose our freedom here in the United States. It is coming, whether we like it or not. God is getting ready to humble America. And I've said it more than once. Nobody wants to pay attention. The church wants to stay lukewarm. We want to sit in our comfy seats and we listen to false doctrine. Well, that's about to change. I told you I saw people wailing, weeping, and crying before the Lord. God is not messing around. I'm telling you right now, God means business. He's going to scold the body of Christ. He's going to get the church in order because he's coming back for a bribe without spot a wrinkle. So you can either listen to what I have to say, another prophetic servant say, or you can miss what God's about to do. I'm going to tell you right now. And if you don't get your life in order, all right, remember what he said? There are going to be those saying, oh, Jesus, I did this in your name. I did that in your name. He'll say, I never knew you. That's what Jesus is going to say. He's going to say that to many of you. I never knew you because you didn't do what God said to do. You wanted to do your own life. You wanted to plan your own thing. Go here, go there. You did not want to do what God said. Take up your cross and follow the Lord. That's right. It's in the Bible. If you don't believe me, start reading the word of God. Stop pulling out scripture and read what you want to read. It's in the Bible. And it says, take up your cross and follow me. If you don't, it says you're not even a disciple of the Lord. That's what the Bible says. I didn't say, don't get mad at me. Read the word of God. Now, I'm getting the power of God on me now. I'm not trying to be mean. But you know something? God is speaking. 
but we're not listening. And when we don't listen, guess what? God takes our mind and he scolds us because he loves you and I. He don't do it to punish us. He loves us. He's coming back for a bride with us to Rico. And he's going to get us there. I'm going to tell you right now. He loves us. All right. God is grieved. He's grieved right now because he sees what's going on in the churches. He's going to reprimand us. He's going to get us right because he's coming back soon. All right. I'm sorry. I have to say that. The Holy Spirit, I, I'm just saying because I, I get a lot of that where people don't want to hear this type of message. And then they get afraid. To, they take off, you know. Hey, I got to speak what God says. It's not about me. It's about Jesus. All right? Don't get mad at me. This That Bible, this Bible, I, Jesus wrote the Bible, all right? So if you're mad at God, his disciples wrote it. Get mad at God. Don't get mad at me. I'm just bringing it to your attention. Because if I don't, he's going to hold me accountable. All right? I'm going to stand before the Lord one day. And he's going to say, why didn't you do what I asked you to do? And what am I going to do? Make excuses and lie to the Lord? No. I have to do what he's called me to do. This is the calling that God gave me. I've even said to God, why do I got to do this, Lord? Why do I got to uh, be so rough, you know? That's why God, you know, I'm going to lose my voice. I'm Italian, all right? My dad's Italian. He's bald. When we were younger, my dad, he didn't mess around. I'm going to tell you right now. My dad, he just had to give us those eyes, my brother and I. We went to a relative's house. We didn't touch nothing. We knew better. All I had to do was... Let his eyes would light up, and we knew, hey, we're going to get it if we don't behave, you know, because my dad would give us the belt. He didn't mess around, you know, and that's what's the matter with the kids. We don't discipline the kids. Now, I'm not saying beat the kid, but we don't discipline them, all right? I told you what's going on now with the Ontario. I mean, come on, parents. They should be doing something. Now they have to preach this. I'm not pretty. In the school, they have the sex education, teaching these young children about transgender, about body parts. I mean, little kids. I mean, what happened to them playing with stuffed animals? And now they're playing with stuffed parts of your body. I mean, come on. What's going on here? Our world's changing. And they got parents. And they're, oh, oh, they clap it. I mean, come on. What's going on here? Our nation's changing, and we're just sitting back, and we're not doing nothing. Wake up. Do you hear what I'm saying? Wake up. Church, wake up. Because I'm going to tell you right now, if you don't wake up, God is going to wake you up. <laughs> I mean, there is so much going on right now that a lot of people don't even know. They're so busy going here, going there, planning their next vacation, planning their Christmas holiday. What about things that don't mean nothing? Um, that's right. It means nothing. What about your tomorrow? Are you born again? Do you know Jesus Christ of Nazareth? Do you know where you're going to spend your eternity? That's what's important. Not planning your next vacation or planning your Christmas holiday. You're here with me and gone the next. You don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Yes, destruction is coming. People are going to die. That's right. I've been given the warning, so it's others. Just because you don't see it yet doesn't mean it's not coming. It's going to go like this. <laughs> Boom! Suddenly. You're not even going to know it. It's just going to hit you. You're too busy not paying attention. The world is sleeping. All right? The church is sleeping. We can't just go here, go there, go wherever we want. Hop out of plane, go this. No! The violence is getting worse. It's going to get a lot worse up until the return of Christ. All right? It's like a baby in... Um, what does it say? The pains will increase up until the return of Christ. It's going to happen. Okay? These are the end days. We're getting ready to go through, the, I believe, tribulation, seven years. I don't know how far, but I believe it's somewhere in the middle. God will get us out. I don't believe it's before and I don't believe it's after. It's somewhere in the middle. Because we're going to be watching and looking for the Lord, waiting. We're going to wait. You're going to wait. I know there are those that they don't want to wait. You're going to wait. I got to wait. 
You gotta wait. God's not respect your persons. I'm gonna tell you right now, God's made me wait. God's making me wait. You're gonna wait. All right? And there, there are those saying, oh, Jesus is coming. Well, Jesus is not coming today. I'm going to tell you right now. He's not coming tomorrow. He's not coming yet. He's not coming on your time schedule. He's coming when he's ready to come. That's right. So you might as well just sit back, rest in the Lord, and start praising him. I, I know you don't like what you're going through. This is just the beginning. All right? It says, you're going to hear wars, rumors of wars. Pestilence, earthquake. But what does it say? Um, this is only the beginning of sorrow. It didn't say the end. The beginning of sorrows. So we have just started, okay? We haven't even <laughs> we haven't even started yet. All right. God's getting ready to use his chosen servants. They're gonna do work for the Lord. He's gonna bring more, all right? But you have to cooperate with the Lord. You can't do what you want to do. It's not about you or me. It's about Jesus. You have got to cooperate. You've got to submit to God. I'm going to tell you right now, you think I enjoy doing this? I've done this for over 20-something years. You think I like sitting in this cave? No. You think, Daniel you like sitting? No. We want to do our own thing. But you know what? You've got to crucify that flesh and you've got to do God's will. It's not about you and what you want, your plan and your agenda. It's about what does Jesus want. It's time we go to Jesus and say, Jesus, what is it you want me to do? I surrender my heart, my life to you. That's what it's about. It's about Jesus doing things his way, not your way. You've got to deny self. You've got to die. Everything in you is going to die. Do you hear what I'm saying? And it hurts. It's painful. It ain't fun. I've done a lot of crying and I still cry because it's dying. Our flesh is not dead yet. Remember, Apostle, why do I do those things I keep up that I shouldn't be doing? It's your flesh. It's not dead yet. God's got to crucify it. He's got to kill it. That's what he's doing in us. All right? He's going to do that in you. But you, there are those that say, no, I don't want to do that. Even my girlfriend tells me, I couldn't do what you're doing. Yeah, because you know what? And then we say, oh, well, let them do it. Oh, well, just let them do it. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, you don't do what God says do. He's, you're going to answer for it. We're all accountable to God. He didn't say some of my children. No, we're all accountable. We're all going to stand before the Lord on judgment day. He's going to say, what would you do? Did you do what he said do? Or did you do what you wanted to do? Ask yourself, are you doing what God said do? Or are you planning your own life? There's many planning their own life. They're not even asking God. They don't even pray to God. All right? Well, it's time we get on our knees and start seeking the Lord. It's time, I've said it before, get your prayer closet, start praying and seeking God for you and your family. I'm not joking, right? I'm not doing this just to do this, all right? I'm doing this to obey the Lord. God loves you enough to warn you. He loves all of us to warn us, but we're stubborn. I am too. I'm not saying I'm any better. I'm stubborn. I don't want to listen to God. Even now, I'm going through things. I'm like, God, I, I hear you. Like, he said something to me there. I'm going to bring it to you in just a minute. He said to me, let it go. <laughs> and not just to me, but to you too. Just distractions. Remember, we talked about that. He goes, let it go. And I said, well, God, you're telling me to let it go, but you allowed it. You, know, you ever feel like that? You know, God's allowing all this, but then all of a sudden he's like, let it go. <laughs> but he allowed it in the first place. You know, God, why did you allow me to go through this? And you don't understand. And yet he's telling you that that's not my will, but you're it's like, you know that, but you can't get yourself to do it. You know what I'm talking about. All right, we're going a whole different direction. I told you it's about the Lord. I'm done with this all ago. It's not about me. All right. This is about Jesus, what he wants to say and what he wants to do. All right. And I believe in we're online. I'm just going to keep going because it's not about me. And, you know, God, I know God, the enemy wants to stop it. So, Lord, we just, 
let's just, Father, we just pray against the enemy right now. He's under our feet in Jesus' name. We apply the blood of Jesus over this video. I pray there will be people that will be tuned in. Listen, be touched by your spirit in Jesus' name. Because not about me. All right. You know, Marsha Burns and Prophet Russ, mm, you're right on it. You're right on it today. <laughs> I'm like, God speaking here. And it goes along with something God said to me and to you. Okay, I told you before, when he talks to me, it's not just me. He's got a word for you, too. All right. And, you know, I, I'm like, God, why are you making me do this? You know, because you see all these things in me, and I'm like, but but I'm supposed to be an example. I said, God, I'm not, I don't, you picked the wrong person because I got things in me. I don't know why I'm this example, but this is what he's chosen me to do, you know. And so I, I've got to do it. All right. So Marsha Burns said this. I'm starting to get hot now. I got the pan. <laughs> yeah, it's cool as blow, but not cold up. It's like it, going to be 80 today. And I'm like, I know some of you are freezing. And I'm like, God, I like it cold. <laughs> and Daniel doesn't like it cold, but I like it cold. My husband doesn't like it cold, but I like cold. I told you yesterday I like to drink coffee. I love when it gets cool. All right. Marsha Byrne said this, you are still in a transitional time between the ending of the last spiritual season and the beginning of a new one. It's, t it's a time of self-examination and preparation for what's ahead. See, I told you, God's getting ready to move. Many yearn for outward change, but the change has to begin internally, she says. There are things to consider and decisions to be made before you can see any measurable difference in your circumstances. Yield to the working of my spirit to reshape and to transform you, says the Lord. Romans 12, 2. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good, acceptable, perfect will of God. Proverbs said this. I love this. He says, the Father says, don't look back. <laughs> don't look back. We got to keep going forward. You can't look back, all right? Yesterday's man will not sustain you today. That's right. Yesterday's vision only speaks of the past and not your future. Your past will not define your future, amen? And present circumstances are not commentary on what tomorrow holds. I am the one who holds tomorrow in my hand and will shape your life and your circumstances according to my plans and purposes. See, it's not according to your plan. It's according to God's plans, all right? My character is so broad and so deep, says the Father, that every morning is a new opportunity to learn things about me that you never knew or conceived. Relinquish the past and step obediently into the new season that is ahead. See, we have to be obedient. That goes for me, it goes for you, it goes for all of us. Let go. <laughs> oh, Prophet Ross, if you only knew. Let go of the emotional attachments. To the people, places, and things that at present have no active role in your life. <laughs> it's right on it. Not just me. There are others. All right? God's not just talking to me. I know he's talking to you too. And I'm going to tell you what he said to me and for you. So we got to let go of those emotional attachments. I will hold them in my care. See, we can't worry about them. we got to release whatever it is that's bothering us and say, God, you take care of it. All right? Pray for that person. Love them and pray for them and let them go. Or whatever it is you're dealing with. All right? Let it go. Lord, help us to let it go. We release it to you, Lord. Let it go. Lord, take it away from us, out of our minds, out of our hearts. In Jesus' name, we need that. I know I do. I know there are others. Okay? And those distractions. The enemy is trying to get us Focus on, because I'm going to tell you right now, God's got new assignments for you and me, which I've said before, and I'm going to read it in a minute again. There are chosen servants that we're going into a whole new different arena, all right? So we cannot take this baggage with us, because things are going to be different, all right? And we've got to hear the voice of the Lord. We can't be firing, bickering. There's got to be peace, unity, and love amongst us. The body of Christ has to get along. Our families have to get along. I've said that over and over. God help me. 
Keep my big mouth shut. Hey, it's not just me. There are others. we got to watch our tongues. Let our words be few. All right. He goes on to say here, let go of emotional attachment. People, places, and things that are present have no active role in you. Maybe you were married at one time and you're thinking about your past husband or, you know, there, there, there are all kinds of things, all right? Or maybe you didn't do something right and you're thinking about, uh, or maybe somebody passed away. I know my dad, my mother died, and my dad, uh, uh, Tom, still feels bad that he didn't treat my mother right. You can't dwell on that. All right? You can't dwell on that. Maybe there are things you didn't do right in your life. You can't dwell on that. Do you hear me? Maybe you made mistakes. We can't dwell on that. We've got to give it to God and just go to God, Lord, and say, God, forgive us, Lord. Help us to move forward. Forget it. Forget it. we got to forget it, Say This is a new day. God's got new things for all of us, and we can't. Go into those new things with that baggage. And the enemy is constantly, what is in your ear? Look what you did. Look what you did. You tell them, shut up. Tell them to be quiet. That's right. You tell that enemy, shut up. Be quiet. God's forgiven me. I'm, God's washed me and cleansed me in his blood. I'm a new creation. I'm born again. I'm free. Whom the sun sets free is free. I don't care. And maybe others keep reminding you. That's the devil. The devil! The de you know, he'll use people to remind you of what you've done. To try to stop you from going forward. You can't let that stop you. you got to just do what God's asked you to do. He'll help you. He'll give you strength. And he'll use people like me to encourage you to go forward. Don't look back. There's nothing back there but pain and suffering. And that's for all of us. We've got to look forward. God's got new things for you and for me. So we got to let go of those things. You put your attention on me, he says, and my plan for your life. And that's right. We've got to put our attention on Jesus. He's got great plans, saints. What does it say? No eye. I'm going to read it. No eye has seen, no ear has heard. What God's prepared for those that love him. I will keep safe that which you have committed to my care. Do not look back, says the Father. I am the God of the now. Yesterday is gone. And tomorrow is a probability that will not unfold in the manner in which you might think. See, we can't worry about tomorrow. We don't know what's going to happen. We take each day as it comes. And I'm learning that too. Not to focus what might happen tomorrow. Take each day. This day is your assignment, and this day is where you'll find the packet of grace that I'm unfolding on your behalf. Amen. God gives us grace for each new day. So we've got to accept God's grace. All right, that's a good word, Papa. I like that. All right, let me turn this worship back on. I'm going to check and make sure we're online again. I'm sure we are. I know people are working too. There's still nobody on here, but I'm sure we're taping here. It's online. Yeah. 
them up. And maybe that's why God's got me going through this work. I mean, it keep, goes on and on and on. I'm like, when, God, when? You know, and I keep hearing it every week. But he tells us, you and I, those things, to keep us encouraged, saints. We have got to stay encouraged in the Lord. So I keep telling, where are we getting out of the cave? I know it's coming and it's getting very close. God wants all of us Christians to stay encouraged in the Lord. Waiting on the Lord is not easy and frustrating when you have waited as long as we have, 25 years. I know I've been getting restless and impatient, and I know that. I get, I get really upset. I get really, where I'm like, God, hurry up! You, you might know what I'm talking about. I know that our girls are waiting. They're like, God, win, God, win. All right, you know, maybe this is, maybe you're prepared like me for such an hour as this. This is the time. So, remember, I said, we're testimonies to you to keep you encouraged in the Lord. And I give God all the praise on our Lord. Remember Isaiah 20, 10, 20, 10 says, for precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little, there a little. Right now, and this is what God said to me. And he did, he said something to me, and then he said something to you. And this affects all of us, saints. It don't just affect me, okay? This affects all of us. Some in a greater measure, there are gonna be those that are gonna be chosen, prophetic servants to speak and there are others that will come along and there, there, there may be those that don't even follow God. It's going to affect all of us. Do you hear what I'm saying? What's coming is going to affect all of us. I said this. I see myself packing and getting ready to leave my apartment. God has not shown me where I'm going yet. And he doesn't. Don't tell me. He told me before. It's a surprise. This is what I heard the Holy Spirit say to me. He was talking to me first and then to you, chosen. And I've said this before, and I know it's God who's talking. He said, What is about to happen will happen suddenly. And I've said that before. Forget your past, I heard him say. Tomorrow is a new day for you. I have so much more in store for you. Do not stay below. Come up higher where I am, says the Lord. No eye has seen and no ear has heard what I have prepared for those that love me. Daughter, you love me. I have much in store for you. Come now and follow me to where I'm taking you. Leave behind those broken dreams. My ways are much higher, says the Lord. Your ways are not my ways. Stop worrying about your future. Take one day at a time. I, the Lord, hold your future in my hands. Let go. That's what he said again. That's what Prophet said. Let go. And this is not just for me, it's for you too. So I'm going to read you what he said. He said, let go. I hear the Lord saying, he was talking to me, and he might be talking to you too. But he said, let them. He said, let go. I hear the Lord saying. There are hidden things you are still holding on to. I, the Lord, say, let them go. You cannot do what I've called you to do as long as you keep holding on to that which needs to go. You know what that is. It is time, says the Lord. There is no more time, says the Lord. And this is for you, he said. This word is not for you only, he said. It is for all my children. See, he wasn't just talking to me, he's talking to you. There are those I'm calling up higher, he said. They must let go of those things that are holding them back. I told you earlier I have new assignments for all of you chosen servants of mine. You cannot do what I'm calling you to do, being distracted. Get rid of those distractions now, says the Lord. What I'm calling you to do, my children, is very important. It requires your full attention. Tomorrow, many of your life, of you, tomorrow, many of you, your life will change, is what I heard him say. In 
and it may not be tomorrow, it may be the next day, it may be the next week. Remember, you tell the prophetic servants before he's getting ready to do something, so it is coming. I'm getting ready to shake the heavens and earth. Once more, I will shake all of heaven and earth. Make sure you are built on the solid rock, rock Christ Jesus, not on sinking sand. Those that are built on sinking sand will collapse, says the Lord. Your world is passing away very quickly. Only those that do my will can endure. And I, I, I capitalize that. Can endure. If you're doing God's will, you can endure. But if you're not doing God's will, you're not going to endure. You've got to be doing God's will. Okay, he said, only those that do my will can endure until the very end of age. What you're about to, to go through, children, is only the beginning. That's what I heard him say. I'm getting ready to shake my church so that they are founded on me, King Jesus, not the world. They've had their eyes on the world and not on me. Tomorrow all that will change, says the Lord. And that's what he gave me from Lord spoken. And then he gave me the scripture, first one things do not. But as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love. Now, if you're not a subscriber on our YouTube page, you might want to go over there and hear the other words. I've given several words. I'm not going to go through all of them. You're getting ready to step into your calling. I gave that 11, 11. And then I, I give a word on 11, 10. I think I'm hearing things because, you know, God keeps telling me I'm getting out of the cave. He said, you've been living in that cave long enough. It's time for you to come out. That's why I heard him saying, I jump up and laughed at God. Because, you know, he keeps telling me we're getting out of this cave. I said, God, when I see it, I'm <laughs> Because it hasn't happened yet. But I know, I know if God tells you something, it's going to happen. But, you know, we've got to realize it's not our timing. It's God's timing. 1019, remember I talked about what season your Christian walk up your cave on your end. Are you in? I'm going to be doing that book. Just like the four seasons, which I talked about earlier, we're going to be talking about that. Remember the scripture. I love this. Have a good two, two, three. Then Lord answered and said, Write the vision. Make it plain on tablets. Say, my run who reads it. For the vision is yet for the appointed time. Amen. Maybe you've been waiting for this time. I know I have. For the vision is yet for the appointed time, but at the end it will speak and it will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it. That's right. You notice how I say? You may tarry. And maybe you're still in your cave. Don't die in that cave. You wait. Wait for it because it will surely come. It will not tarry. If you don't have that scripture, you may want to write it down. It's, I read it all the time. It brings great encouragement to me. Habakkuk 2, 2, 3. Then I wrote another one on 10, 17. Saints, guess what I just saw? Daniel and I, we took a walk to the grocery store. We come walking towards our mailbox. And guess what we saw? We saw a U-Haul. And I've seen several of them through the years. I've taken pictures of them. I've posted them. And I believe that's for you too, to encourage you. And I said, God, don't let me down. You keep telling me we're getting out of here. If people are watching me, don't let me down. It's coming. I know it is. I know what God said. We have to have faith. We have to keep believing. 10, 17, 19, I'm getting ready to take you out of the game. Keep telling me. 10, 11, your time of waiting is coming to an end. 10, 9, your new day is finally here. 10, 4, thank you, Jesus. It's the liberty time. 10-3, your spiritual baby is coming forth. You know, I talk, I've talked about it. There are some spiritual babies that are getting ready to come forth. Not just mine, but there are others. I'm going to do a message on that. Spiritual babies are coming forth. 10-2, remember I said I was walking out of the bathroom, talking to the Lord, asking me if he could wait because I did not feel good. So the Holy Spirit said to me, there is no more time to wait. Then I had a small vision where I saw just not, not just me, but others that have been in caves a long time coming out and it's a new season. I've told you before, I felt like you know those people that dig in mines, they're in a cave and here we are coming out we see the light. You know Daniel's been in the cave all along, you know. Daniel I mean he goes for a walk in here now I can't even ride the bike, you know. Where I used to be able to ride the bike, now the bike butts and can't ride the bike. 
Oh, I'll talk to you about his teeth. I told you what he said, what the Lord did. Those teeth won't wear out, you know. God, he gets upset, you know, because he's like, I want to be healed because he wants to go do this and he wants to go do I said, you're not healed yet because God knows you're going to run. <laughs> you know, Daniel's got his own thing. He wants to, he wants to sit still. You know, well, I've been sitting longer than him. You know, God is teaching us how to wait. And when God opens the door, we still got to listen to the Lord and be led by the Holy Spirit. You know, he's taught Daniel and I how to wait on the Lord, when to move, when to stay. So we're to teach others that as well. You know, we don't talk about waiting in the church. We're a microwave church. We want to right this minute. I'm impatient. I'm not going to lie. There are times I go to the grocery store. I'm like, I'm not, I don't know. I should say a lot of times. I'm standing in line and here we are waiting. You know? And it depends. You know, if I don't have my menopause, I'm going to pray for me. Because I'm like, God, I want that to be over with. You know, because I'm more, more moody. Actually, I'm doing pretty good right now. <laughs> but, but anyways, um, we'll be at a grocery store, and I, you know, I'm fine. Third day, I'll let them go, and I'm, you know, I'll, I'll even say, go ahead, go in front of me, you know, and I'll wait, and then I'll forget something, and I gotta come back in line. I gotta wait, and you know what? No one lets me in, so I gotta sit there. And I gotta wait, and I'm like, oh, you know. But God is teaching me how to wait, and you, know, He wants us to learn to wait. With a good act. I mean, even now the computer's breaking down. I'm getting upset. I'm like, God, you don't help me. I'm not gonna be able to do this. So I get up. You know, so I, but hey, Saints, we're gonna have problems. We're gonna have to wait. And that's why I said, God, you picked the wrong person here. You know, I have a brain injury too, you know. So I get, you know, that's why when people come at me, I'll say, Hey, I got a brain injury. What's your excuse? You know. So, anyways. Right. And then remember on 9.23, I talked about word of scolding. Go listen to that. It's very powerful. The Holy Spirit was talking. And I'm not uplifting myself. I give Jesus the praise. But he was saying to me, I've got somewhere for you to go. And if you don't listen to me, you, you know, I can't do what he's called me to do. And then he'll give it to somebody else. What he's showing me. I'm like, why? Well, you know, because... God means what He says. We can't have fighting and friction around us with our family, with our brothers and sisters. We gotta get along. You know, it's an honor for God to choose you and to choose me. You don't have to. So if God has chosen you to do a, a great big work, it's an honor. So we, we shouldn't hold that lightly. So let's pray, Saint. It's coming. I know it's coming. It may not be tomorrow or the next day, but it's, it's gonna be here very soon. I know it is. Because I keep asking God, when God win? <laughs> you, know, and I, you know, so pray for me. Pray that God help me be patient. You know, and, and he's getting ready to call me speak. He said, he's going to set me up on the platform. I'm going to speak. And I'm like, I'm nervous. I'm like, Lord, give me the words to say. I don't know what I'm doing. But, you know, he knows. He's got different assignments for you and And we give Jesus the praise. All right, if you'd like to help us, come to end yet.
for helping us. We thank you. You know, if you'd like to plan a gift into our ministry, you can give a gift through PayPal right now and come directly to us at our corner 10 at gmail.com. Or you can send it in the mail at Don's Heartbelt Corner, PO Box 161273, Altamont Springs, Florida 32716. All the information is on there. I want to pray for all of us uh, before we get ready to leave. I, I make sure I do that, Saints, because as I get busier, you know, I'm not going to have time to do it. And I want you to know, you know, I do pray for you. Uh, I can't pray individually as I get busier. I won't have the time. I believe we're going to have people that are going to help us in this ministry. And I believe there will be those that are coming, coming beside us. So, Father, we just come together and pray now. I pray for your people, Lord, today. I pray for our nation, Lord. I pray for President Donald Trump. We lift him up as the commander in chief of this nation, as the president of this nation, Lord. We pray that he'll make the right decisions. Him and the White House, Lord, we don't worship him, but we worship you, Jesus. We pray for his protection, a hedge of protection over President Donald Trump, his travel plans, wherever he goes, Lord, wherever he travels to. And we pray that you would speak to him out of a change of heart, Lord, that we turn our hearts back to you and start seeking you, removing the sin that is in this nation, that we humble ourselves in you. Lord, we need you more now than ever. Change is coming. We need you, Jesus. We pray for protection amongst against our enemies, Russia, China, Iran, North Korea. We pray for Israel's protection, Lord. Keep them safe, Lord. May we have nothing to do with trying to divide that country, Lord. With the, with the Iran has blood. Lord, keep us all safe in the palm of your hands, Lord. The weapon against us shall prosper. We pray the blood of Jesus over our economy, Lord. Keep our economy strong. Continue to provide for your people, Lord. Food, water, shelter, you have been good to all of us, Lord. You have blessed this nation, Lord. May we not forget all that you've done for us, Lord. You've given us so much, Lord. And we take it for granted, oh God. Forgive us, including me, I've done it too. We be good, Lord. Help us praise you in good times and bad times, Lord. We know a change is coming, Lord. Help us not to get so fixed up on worrying about what's going on in this world, Lord, that we keep our eyes upon you, Lord, not turning to the right or left, Lord. May we be directed by your Holy Spirit, that you would lead us and guide us, and that we walk in your ways, Lord, that are pleasing, Lord, because, Lord, you do have new assignments for us, Lord. May we not be distracted, Lord. Praise and sing. Praise and thank you for his love. Thank you. 
first mercy is grace that's you every day. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hide us, Lord, from the shelter of your wings. Hide us, oh God. Protect us from the storm. The storm is coming, Lord. The storm is coming. Oh God, protect your people. Protect your people, oh God. Save them that need to be saved. The world is lost. Oh God, the world is lost. Wake up this nation, Lord. Wake up this nation. A wide awakening is coming. A wide awakening. Oh God. I pray you wake us up, Lord. Wake your people up, Lord. Things are changing quickly, Lord. We're stubborn. We're all our, We don't want to listen, Father. We don't want to listen, Lord. And you have a way of waking us up. You have a way of reaching us, Lord. You're going to have your way, whether we like it or not. You're God, Lord. You're God. We're just your people, Lord. We're your people. But you are God. We need to worship you as God. There's only one God. His name is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Maybe you still don't know Jesus. Call on him today. Ask him to save you. Stop being stubborn. There are those that don't know Christ and are being stubborn. There are atheists. There are those listening to me that don't know Jesus. And God is saying today is a day of the Lord. Now is the time of God's favor. You don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. We're here with me and God the next. Call him today. Say, Jesus, save me. Don't wait till you're on your deathbed. Don't wait till it's over. Do you hear me? It's going to be too late. It's going to be too late. For those that don't know, in 2000, I was in a dangerous car accident. I should have been dead. I had brain surgery on the right side of my brain. I'm not crazy. I know what's going on. But God spared me. God spared me in his mercy and grace. He had the paramedic come in my direction or I would have been dead. I was turning purple. God had her come that way. She do not even do that work anymore. God was merciful. I was saved. I was born again. I know Jesus. But you know what? We don't get a second chance. We don't come back. There's no such thing as reincarnation. You're not coming back. Once you're dead, you're dead. If you don't know Christ, call him now. Don't wait. Don't wait. It'll be too late. It'll be too late. There are those that are going to die. They're going to die. They're going to end up in hell. And they're going to wish that they gave hell to the Lord. It's going to it's gonna be too late for you. It's going to be too late for you. Do you hear what I'm saying? Don't wait. Don't wait. It'll be too late. God loves you enough to warn you, but you're being stubborn. You're being stubborn. There are those that already made up their mind. They refuse to come to Christ, and there's nothing I can say. There's nothing I can say that's going to change your mind. Oh, God. Touch your people. There are people that are going to die. Touch our families, oh Lord. Save our families, Lord. We have family members that don't know you, Lord. Oh God, save our families, Lord. Save your people, Lord, today. I pray, oh God, save your people. It's all about you. Our life is so fleeting. We're here in a minute. We're gone in a minute. Our lives are so fleeting. We take our lives for granted. We all do. We all take our lives for granted. Oh, God has given each one of us lives. Life is a blessing. We kill millions of babies and don't realize it. God's given us life. We need to repent. We're killing millions of babies in this nation. Touch your people, oh God, touch your people. Wake this nation up, Lord. Wake this nation up, Lord. Oh God, we pray for America. We pray for America. Lord, we ask you to wake America up. Wake President Donald Trump up. Wake the 
the Trump administration up the line. Now is the time. They're so focused on what's happening in this world that they don't see what's getting ready to happen, Lord God. I pray, oh God, that you'd wake them up, that you would shake them up, Lord Jesus, in the midnight hour when they're sleeping, oh God. You can do anything, Lord, just like you did. Joseph, the king, he had a terrible dream. I pray that President Donald Trump would have a dream and that you'd wake him up, you would shake him up, Lord. We're praying for that right now, Lord. Because it's not about me, it's about you, Lord. This nation, Lord. This nation's in trouble. This nation's in trouble. America's in trouble. We need you, Lord. We need you. Destruction is coming. Destruction is coming, I say to you. This is a warning. This is a warning. Destruction is getting ready to happen. Prepare. Prepare now for what God's about to do. Hard days are coming, says the Lord. Hard days are coming. Very hard days. The storm is coming. The storm is coming. That's right. The, the storm is coming, saints. I'm telling you, it's almost here. The storm is almost here. We don't need to worry. God is in control. God will protect us. God will keep us safe. We just got to look to the Lord. Get in your prayer closet, saints. Pray. Pray more now more than ever. Get in your prayer closets and pray. You don't tell me exactly what all is going to happen, but it's going to get worse. It's going to be like a woman in childbirth. We're going to go through it and say, it's coming. It's coming. I just pray we're ready. I pray we're ready. I pray I'm ready. I got things in me. I'm like, God, I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if I can do this. Lord. Pray for me. I'm like, God, I don't know if I can do this. <laughs> He don't give us a choice. We just gotta do it. It's gonna happen whether we want it to happen or not. It's just gonna happen. And you can see the time is flying. It's picking up. See those earthquakes? They're picking up. Things are happening in our world. It's, it's moving. You feel it. You. It's like you feel it. You know what's coming.
you're going to have to go to God. Remember I said what I said what was that word I gave? Um, I can't even think of it right now. You go on, you go on the YouTube and hear the words. I'm not gonna go through all that. Alright. You've got to train yourself up in the Lord. You can't be going to other people to hear what God's saying for you. You've got to hear God for yourself. Alright? He'll speak to you. God's not respect your persons. You, but you've got to get in your prayer closet. You've got to humble yourself and pray to God. And you've got to tune everything out. And it's not easy. Sometimes you're going to sit there and you're going to wait and you're going to wait and you're going to wait. I know we want it right now. But it's not going to happen. you got to wait. God makes us wait. He doesn't speak right away. No, he doesn't. There are times that he don't speak for days. He'll speak when he's ready. And then there's times he'll speak. Oh my God, now you're speaking. I can't, I'm not going to do a video right now. I mean, he speaks. <laughs> he speaks when he wants. You can't tell God when to speak. All right. God just speaks. And you'll hear a small voice. The Holy Spirit will speak to you. But then you have to make sure it lines up with the word of God. And you know, I'm guilty. I'm not saying everything I say is of God. We've got to ask God, show me, is this you talking to me? You know, because I'm going to tell you right, and don't, don't be judging other prophetic servants. Because I'll tell you right now, it's not easy sitting in the presence of God, waiting on God and hearing God. It's very hard. You've got to be in tune with the Holy Spirit. Remember when I, I didn't want to stay here anymore. I was getting this part-time job because I wanted to make a lot of money. You know, even though God provided my needs. But no, I went one. And as soon as I went there, God showed me that you don't want me here. I mean, Dan goes, you look like you're back because I was having to stand up all day. You know, it was giving out samples. And it would have been easy, but she said part-time. But then she wanted me to work all these hours. So I, I, I was there one day and I quit. I was like, that's it. No, I'm not, that's not for me. I knew instantly. This is where I'm called. All right. You know you're called. The Holy Spirit will show you. You'll know. The Spirit will, will, will give you peace. You'll know. This is what God's calling you to do. All right. And if it's not, then you'll know. He'll tell you. And if, you know, there are times you may not know and you'll step out. But He'll let you know if you're not in God. But then there are times if you will it willfully disobey and don't do what God's saying, then you're out of God's will. You know better. All right. We're all like that. We all don't want to listen. We're stubborn. Lord, help us to listen. All right, I think that's it. Oh, getting on, it's getting on here. All right, I want you to know we love you. We're praying for you tomorrow. Can you believe it? Tomorrow's Friday. Tomorrow's Friday. And I told the Lord, no, I'm not to right. I said, God, you better get me out of here before Thanksgiving. I'm yawning, God. You know, because I'm like, I'm ready to get out of here. I'm like, you know what I pray for too, Lord. Get me out of here. And so, so, but you know, God's got to me. His time is not our time. So, but I do know we're getting very near to God. It's His timing, not ours. So we've got to wait on it. Right? I think that's it. Jen, we love you. We're praying for you. And wherever I'm at, I may be outside the cave speaking again next time. You know, I may be out there. I may be somewhere else.